So, you're here to talk about Ant-Man. Yes, sir, I am. Cool, so, uh, do you need your parking validated or something? What? Make sure you pull on the door on your way out, because it looks like a push, but it's actually a pull. Don't, don't, don't you want me to pitch to you? Oh, you're, you're not leaving? I wasn't planning on it. Wow, well, awesome. We had a lot of people leave the project, so I just kind of assumed. Wow, bummer. Yeah, so... You know, please don't leave me, you're my last hope. Sounds good. Please. Okay. So what's the story about? Well, you know how in the first Iron Man movie, there's a character that develops a super suit, and then he's like, oh, this is too powerful to get out. But then a corporate bad guy from the same company wants to sell it and then makes his own evil version of the suit. And so you end up with a big final fight of nice guy super suit versus evil guy super suit. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is... That. Well, if it ain't broke, you know, keep doing it till it stops making money. That's what I figured. So tell me about the characters. Well, first of all, there's Hank Pym. He's the one that invented the shrinking technology, and he used to be Ant-Man. How is that technology gonna work? Inconsistently. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna say that it reduces the space between atoms so objects keep their mass, but then we're gonna do a bunch of stuff that contradicts that. How so? Well, sometimes Ant-Man's gonna have the mass and force of a full-grown man, but other times he'll be light enough to run on a gun barrel or ride an ant. And Hank Pym is gonna have an actual tank as a keychain, which should weigh about 60 tons. Why so inconsistent? Well, I wanted to do certain things because they would look cool, but then I was like, oh, those totally break the rules that I myself established in the script. Yeah. But then I was like, I don't care. And you did it anyway. And I did it anyway. The rule of cool strikes again. Yeah, so anyway, Hank wants this guy Scott to become Ant-Man and save the world because he can't do it himself anymore. Scott? Yeah, he's this guy that's just getting out of jail. Why does Hank want him? Well, Scott's an amazing thief, like the stuff of legends when it comes to stealing. Why was he in jail? Oh, because he got caught stealing. Doesn't... Doesn't sound like he's that good at it. Yeah, I guess not. In fact, he's gonna fail pretty much any time he tries to steal something in the movie. Strange choice of a guy to save the world. I guess so. So what does Scott say when Hank asks him? Oh, well, he doesn't ask him directly. Oh, he doesn't. No, instead he sets up a super elaborate series of events that could go wrong in a thousand different ways, just so that maybe Scott could steal the suit. Why didn't he just ask him? He wanted to see if he'd be able to break into a safe. Could have just asked him. Yeah, but this way is more fun. This Hank guy is playing around a lot for someone who wants to save the world. Oh, yeah. Huh. Anyway, Scott was in jail for about five years, so now he wants to make money so he could pay child support and see his daughter. How old is his daughter? She's like six or seven. So he went to jail for stealing when he had a one or two year old baby at home. That's right. I gotta say, Hank Pym is putting a lot of faith in this super sketchy dude. Yeah, well, he says everyone deserves a second chance. Yeah, but should your second chance out of jail have saved the world level stakes? Probably not. So who else is in the movie? Well, there's Hank's daughter, Hope, that he keeps secrets from for no valid reason. Huh. And she's gonna fall in love with Scott because they're both attractive. And is there a villain? in the movie? Oh yeah, we've got this villain Darren Cross and he is evil. So what's his deal? I, I just told you. Oh, yeah, just like a generic evil guy, you know? That's what I'm talking about. So he wants to sell this yellow jacket suit to some evil military types. Right, like an Iron Man. But one of them's not super interested. So Cross is gonna use his incomplete shrink tech to turn him into a tiny pile of goo and flush him down a toilet. Jesus, why doesn't he try selling that as a weapon? That's horrifying. He doesn't think of that, I guess. Now, I hate to do this, but is there a way we could kind of tie this movie in with the Avengers? Oh, yeah, super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'll just add like a little side quest where Ant-Man has to go get a thing and he'll end up fighting an Avenger. I love it. What Avenger did you have in mind? Well, Iron Man would be cool. <laughs> yeah, if you want to double the movie's budget. Oh, does Robert Downey Jr. cost a lot? You're damn right he does. That guy's contracts basically drain money from our bank accounts. Oh, wow. Did you know that according to his last contract, we have to pay him every time he uses our bathrooms? I didn't know that. Every time he poops in this building, it costs us a thousand bucks. Jeez. Yeah, I mean... It's not that bad of a deal. Yeah, it's kind of a steal when you think about it. So anyway, how does the movie end? Well, Darren Cross is gonna end up figuring out the shrink tech and finishing his suit. Uh-oh. So the team is gonna try to steal the technology from him, and it's gonna end in this big fight between him and Scott in their little super suits. How's that gonna go? Well, despite having no training and never having been in the suit before, Cross is gonna be like an expert fighter. Wow. And then Scott's gonna go subatomic to kill him. Subatomic? Yeah, like smaller than an atom. But you said the technology works by bringing atoms closer together. Yeah, whatever. Okay. And then Scott's gonna be pardoned for all the illegal stuff he did, and he's gonna dedicate himself to his family. Yeah, I guess he's not gonna wanna do anything that would jeopardize being able to see his daughter. That's the last thing he'd do. Hey guys, Ryan here. Hope you enjoyed that pitch. There are thousands more pitch meetings on the channel, so be sure to check those out. It might be a slight exaggeration, but there's a lot. Let me know in the comment section what other movies I should do pitches for. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.